This is Sokani Endorphin Pro 3, a high-performance running shoe designed with beginners in mind, providing unparalleled comfort and support to help you tackle from your first 5K all the way to your first marathon. In this review, we'll take a closer look at what makes the Endorphin Pro 3 so special, including its innovative design, advanced materials, and cutting-edge technology. So, whether you're starting out or looking to take your running game to the next level, you won't want to miss this review. So guys, uh, let's be back with another review. Today I have the Endorphin Pro 3, which is probably going to be my marathon shoe. Full disclaimer, this is my very first carbon plated shoe experience. I've never had a carbon plated shoe before, and this is the one that I'm gonna be using for my marathon training and to run my very first marathon. The marathon I'm, uh, I'm running is in December and it's called CIM or California International Marathon. And it's kind of scary. Uh, we'll see how we can do there. Hopefully uh, the training will be good and I will get me to the finish line. My fastest half that I ran was four or five months ago. It was the San Jose Rock and Roll Marathon, a half marathon, and I ran it just under an hour and 50 which is around a 15, a 20 minute mile pace. My goal is at least trying to go for the under four hours. We'll see. So the first time I thought about carbon plate shoe, I wasn't too convinced that it was a good idea for me. Since I'm not an elite runner, I thought that these shoes, the super shoes were mostly for elite runners, runners that were in the mid sevens, low sevens, maybe mid sixes meters per mile. And why would I spend a lot of money, 225 by the way, on a shoe that wasn't going to bring me a lot more benefits speed-wise. Um, when I could easily just run my first marathon on my Endorphin Speed 3, that is a shoe that I love, in fact, it's my favorite shoe by far, and just save the money. But the reason why I decided to buy these ones and give it a try was because of a couple months ago, Sakani had a sale on President's Day of 25% off store-wide, and that took this shoe that cost 225 to just 170. And I felt that if I wanted to ever try uh, a carbon plate shoe and I didn't want to spend that much money, th that was the deal to take. So I decided to give it a try. Okay, let's start with the things I like about this shoe. First of all, I feel that this super shoe, carbon plate shoe, is for a much broader uh, spectrum of runners from beginner runners, slower runners, middle of the pack runners like me, or even elite runners that can benefit and feel comfortable in this shoe for a number of reasons. One of them being the midsole. The midsole is made with Sakon Spar Run PB foam, which is the same one that we can find in the Endorphin Speed 3. The difference between the Pro 3 and the Pro 2 is the stack height. Sakon went way up on this one in comparison to the previous version. The Pro 2 came with 32, with 36 millimeters stack at the heel, this one, just under the legal limit at 39.5 millimeter, being the legal limit 40 millimeter. It also comes with a 31.5 millimeter stack at the forefoot, giving you an eight millimeter drop. The foam, as you can see, is very soft, very cushioning, and also comes with an S-shaped carbon plate that you can see through the midsole, and you can see where it says speed roll technology, that's part of the carbon plate as well. A speed roll technology is basically the geometry of the shoe. It's a, it's a geometry, it's the rocker geometry that, that propels you forward. So when you're running in the shoe, you can feel that pop. That pop comes from the softness of the mid, of the foam plus the stiffness, the bounciness of the carbon plate. So far, I haven't been able to get used to the stiffness of the carbon plate. Again, I've only run 12 miles in the shoe. I know, I, I'm sure that I'm gonna get used to it, but so far it feels great. It feels very, very good. When it comes to the outsole, uh, so I'm gonna put a lot more rubber on this one than in the previous version, which leads me to believe that this is gonna last longer. You, you're gonna be able to put more miles on this one than in previous versions. The outsole is made of XT900 rubber, which is designed to give you a better traction without sacrificing durability. As you can see, it's mo almost the entire shoe is covered by the same rubber, and it comes with a decent amount of rubber. I think that this could easily last 300 miles, if no more. And as we know, 
super shoes tend to last 150, maybe 200 miles. The only thing that could give out uh, would be the carbon plate. The carbon plate could lose the stiffness after 250 miles or so. Let's go to the uh, upper. The upper has this dual layer mesh that is very breathable, very air, uh, airy, and actually very comfortable. The first time I saw this upper, I thought that it wasn't going to be comfortable for me at all. You see, it's kind of see-through, and it's kind of it has a lot of holes even on the tongue. And I, I thought to myself, hey, there's no way that I can feel comfortable in this shoe. Well, I was wrong. The first time I tried it on, it just it blew my mind. Honestly, I was very impressed. And I, you know what? I think it's the most comfortable upper I've, I've experienced in a while, even more comfortable than the one in the Speed 3, because this one gives you a lot of breathability. You feel your feet very fresh, and you feel that cool, that air flowing through your uh, feet. And it looks, you know, durable. It looks very uh, nice. And it has a very good lockdown, which is important on carbon plated shoes or shoes with a rocker geometry, because if you don't have a good uh, heel lockdown, then you can experience or you can have some uh, blisters after long runs or races. In general, those are the things that I really like about this shoe. Um, there's almost nothing to dislike except for two things. There are two things that I don't like about this shoe. One of them being the price. At 225, I feel it's probably a bit too expensive for a runner like me. A runner that is not too fast, that it can probably run at best at this point at eight, eight twenty minute mile pace. That and it's not gonna bring me that much benefit. Um, however, if you can afford this shoe, if you can, if you can pony up the two twenty five. Uh, and you want to try it, go for it. It's a fun shoe to run in and, and you're not going to regret. Or if you if you want to save some money and if you want to experience this shoe, just wait until they go on sale or wait until the Pro 4 comes out. If not, I'm sure the Sakura is going to have a sale either on 4th of July, Black Friday, or Memorial Day. And why not? And the second thing I don't like about this shoe are the laces. These laces, these thin laces, are usually not the ones that come with the Pro 3, but since I chose this colorway, that is uh, the red with the blue, it came with these laces, most likely I'll probably gonna buy one, a different ones on Amazon and then swap them out. But other than that, those are the two things, the price and laces, that I don't like. The rest, when it comes to the upper, com uh, how comfortable it is, how breathable it is, the, the grip and the traction you feel, the outsole is great. The durability, it feels and looks durable. The midsole, very soft, very cushioning, but you still have that bounce, that pop, the stiffness from the plate. So it is a shoe that the more I run in it, the more I fall in love with it. Uh, you can't go wrong with this shoe. It is true to size. It is a very light shoe. I think for my size 10, men uh, weighs like 7.7 .7 ounces. Very light. I'm a huge Saucony fan. Um, I have the Triumph 19 as my daily trainer. I have the Speed 3 for my speed workouts and now the, the Pro 3 for my races. I hope you enjoyed this video and found this information useful. If so, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm uploading every week new content with reviews of shoes and some other running gear. Also, I'll be sharing with you guys tips that helped me through my running journey like nutrition tips and some training program tips. And if you have any other questions in regards to the Pro 3 or any other shoe, feel free to leave them you know, down below in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer those for you and to help you choose your next race shoe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.